you know, when we're caught up in a moment, we're listening, but we're not listening for understanding. We're not listening for, you know, we're listening and, and so to hear what they say so we can respond and react and get what we got to say out, but we're not really listening. You know what I'm saying? And, and trying to hear so we can have some understanding. Like that's, it wasn't until I had my first video that went viral and like within two days, I had hit like almost 12,000 views. And I'm like, okay, I, I can do that. I can do this a little bit. But once I, I, I played around with different stuff and just seeing like posting different stuff, but I always, my biggest goal was to always make sure that it was just like something positive. And I was trying to swallow hard and hold back my tears, but I busted out crying. And he was like, what's wrong with you? This is Sean Heineman, your premier pre-engagement coach, back with another segment of It's Scary to Mary wanting you to love fearlessly. I have a special guest with me today. Today's guest is a mom. She's a social media influencer. She has more than 44,000 followers on Instagram and more than 40,000 followers on TikTok. Her content is <laughs> phenomenal. One of the reasons I had to reach out to her because today's topic, we're going to discuss dating as an influencer, as an influencer with special guest, Sierra <laughs> Levine. How are you doing this evening, Sierra? Hey, hey. Excited to be here. Finally, we are we, we, finally we can have our time because you know we've been trying our schedules, but we finally are able to do it. I'm just super excited um to be here. I'm excited to be a guest. Um, and you know, I'm excited. Let's get to it. <laughs> For sure, because I've been following your content. And well, let's just jump into this because I don't want to waste any. Let's go. Let's go. (laughs) Who or what influenced you to create the content that you do? Okay, so I can't say that someone specifically influenced me. I'll tell you this. Let me just kind of give you a little bit of the story. So when the pandemic hit, I was that person who was like, I ain't never getting on TikTok because TikTok is for little kids and I ain't got time for that kitty stuff. So it wasn't until I had moved to Tennessee and mind you, I'm in a new state, don't know nobody. And I'm like, okay, I'm at home. I'm like, let me see what this TikTok stuff is about. Let me just see, you know, I'm curious. And so I get on there, I make my first video. I'm like, oh, okay. So I sat down one day, 30 to 40 minutes, and I just took the time to like, just kind of, um, not explore, but um, research, like, you know, how TikTok works, what, you know, you know, what's trending, all that kind of stuff. And so it wasn't until I had my first video that went viral and like within two days, I had hit like almost 12,000 views. And I'm like, okay, I, I can do that. I can do this a little bit. But once I, I, I played around with different stuff and just seeing like posting different stuff, but I always, my biggest goal was to always make sure that it was just like something positive or I wanted to just be positive. I want to be able to just reach people. And regardless, like I always tell people, no matter how much of a heathen I can be on social media, you're going to receive some positivity or some motivational encouragement from me. So that's my biggest thing. So nobody per se you know, influence me. It was just more so I just decided I want to be a light. That's it. Mm-hmm. So, and, yeah. And you do. You bring the light. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. I, that's one of my biggest things. Like, I love uh, receiving inboxes from just people who don't even know me. They just follow me and just like, you know, you are just, your energy is just amazing. Thank you. And like, that's what truly makes my heart smile. So even if it's one person, I've done my job. Mm-hmm. I agree. Where does the energy come from? Listen, let me tell you this. Not to be deep, the joy of the Lord is my strength, okay? Amen. No, but seriously. No, church? but seriously. <laughs> for real. No, but seriously. So um, Honestly, this is just me. I'm like this 24 seven. You can ask my family, my people like this is just me. I'm I'm just I don't know. The energy is just this is just what I bring. I just love just being 
I don't know. I just, I'm just saying, I just have the energy. I don't know where it comes from. I just, seriously, I just don't. This is just me and who I am. Mm -hmm. I agree. Cause I, I can, I can feel it through the content. I'm like, okay, this isn't just a game. Cause I, you know, I see the videos and you can mm -hmm. So, and you know, what's so crazy is that people I've had, like people for a minute thought it was just an act. And I'm like, no, this is really me. Like, and that's, that's why I like to go live a lot. Because so people can kind of see and get that down to earth, like, no, this is me for real. Like, you know, even when I'm at family functions, I go live so y'all can see, like, this is, oh, this is what Sierra be on for real, <laughs> you know? Oh, yeah, because I was on one of your live, I was on your live last night. Okay. You were just kicking it, you know? And I was like, oh, okay, like, she's she's regular people. She's cool people. Listen, like, that's what's up. One thing I, and, and like, I took, like I said last night in my live, no matter how big I get, I don't ever want to be that person that just acts so grand, like you can't speak and you can't. Like, I'm telling you, I see people, they know, know, me, know me from TikTok. I'm like, come on, let's take a picture. Come on. You know, like, that's how I give them a hug. Like, because I want to always, like, I, all, my biggest thing, even with the line of work I do, you don't know what these people are dealing with on a daily. So just your simple, hey, let's take a picture or, hey, give me a hug. That might stop somebody from going home and committing suicide or something because they just like, you know what, this hugs. You know what I'm saying? You just don't know. And that's why I'm always preaching. Just be kind to people because you don't know what people are dealing with. So, mm -hmm. yes. Yes, I agree. And like you said, you never know what people are dealing with because easily somebody can say something on social media and then it's a different story when they get in the inbox. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, you, you oh you slide slide into the deal. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you're right. Yeah, I mean, if if you're not familiar with my story, I, I slid in my wife's inbox. Okay. On, on Instagram, uh -huh. and we dated long distance, and the Bravehearts community know my story, and and we okay. married six months later. Oh, you didn't waste no time, did you? So let me ask you this just real quick, because I, I, I'm, you know, I mean, you shared a little bit with me last night. I remember seeing your comment on the live. What, um, what was it about your wife that you, that said, you know what, I, I'm gonna marry her? It was. She. There was so many different things. I'll give you two of them. One of them. Okay, give me two. She had a heart for people who couldn't help her. Hmm. Okay. She, she has a heart for homeless people. Um, people who just can't do anything for her in return. Mm -hmm. Just love them so much. And I'm just like, uh -huh. if she has that yeah. kind of love for them, how much love will she have for me who's willing to put it, you know, for me to be. Put the word. Yeah. Yeah. That uh -huh. was one. Two was we, we used to have Bible study over Skype. So, and, and this isn't about me, real quick. So let me just since you asked, let me just give you this back. Oh, I asked, I asked, I asked, I did ask. Okay. <laughs> there was a girl that I was talking to previously before I met my wife, and we were okay. conversing or whatever. She lived in a different state, and I remember asking her. I said, "Would you like having Bible study with me?" And she's like, "Yeah, we'll do it." It's like, okay. A couple of days go by. She's like, "You know what? I haven't had a chance to read yet. Da da da. This whole thing." Kind of repeat it over a week, over a week, because I'm just asking like once a week. That's all I'm asking. Let's right. Break down the word. What is God saying to you? So eventually she came to me. She's like, Sean, you cool. Me and God just ain't in this place right now. I'm just not I'm not feeling that right now. OK. One, I respected the fact that she told me that. Mm -hmm. Because that was very important to me. Like, I need you to have a personal relationship with the Lord outside of me. Yep. Yep. Right. Yeah. That's that's good. Yeah. So when that happened, she she dropped in the in the friend zone. It was like, you know what? Okay. I'm not trying to go there with you. So my wife, she like, when I when I start talking to her, she was like, You want to have Bible study? Let's do it. And then we start yes! having Bible study every week over <laughs> Skype. And uh nothing deep. Us just talking about what do you feel like God is saying to you in this season. Uh -huh. And we read books together over Skype. Oh. So, um, cause I, and I always joke with her. I'll say, look, when I went out, when I started to date again, 
I'm running you through the ringer. I need to need, I need to know what things we can work with together, you know? Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. yeah. and look at y'all married. How long have y'all been married for? It's been six years. We crossed six years on October 27th. Yay. Congrats. Congrats. Yeah. So, yeah. So thank okay, you. Okay. I guess I'm in a hot seat now. Oh, oh yeah. Cause yeah. Cause when everybody see this and they listen to this, there's going to be some comments going on in the comment section. <laughs> Let's get it. I'm not scared. Let's go. Let me ask you, how has being an influencer impact your dating life? Hmm. Well, let me just say, um, so I'm currently single at the moment right now. And prior to me getting, you know, receiving the following that I have, you know, this is just me being transparent 100% with you guys. Guys have, have are always in my inbox saying stuff, saying stuff. And, you know, it's just like, eh, okay, yeah. And then now with a little bit of following, it's like, it's an everyday thing. And it's like, okay, okay. You know, and it's to a point now where, you know, I kind of don't, I'm really hesitant on conversing in DMs. I'm really hesitant. And so it's just kind of like, uh, you know, but the dating, I mean, <sighs> Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm just real hesitant right now. I'm just hesitant. Let me just say that I'm hesitant. <laughs> okay, so since we're here, because we're kicking it now, right? Okay, let's go. What's why? Why? Why are you hesitant? So, um, I'm. It's more hesitant because I'm big on motives, and when I say motives, like I. And I've said this before. I've said this in I said it in my live last night. Um, I think men are infatuated with the fact of being in close proximity of me or having conversations with me. And and I'm not even trying to gloat on myself and be that person. But there are really people. Not even and not even just men. There are women too. But you just have to be careful. That's why sometimes when even when people are commenting on my stories, I don't even respond half the time because just a simple, oh, thank you can be, they think that's a lead way for conversation. Or even I'm hesitant on even double tapping and putting a heart sometimes because you do that, they'd be like, oh, well, hey, beautiful, where are you from? I didn't even say nothing. I just put the heart, like, you know what I'm saying? But I don't want to be mean. So I'm just, I, sometimes, you know, I'll be like, hey, I'm from Indianapolis, you know, but I'm blunt though, and I keep it real. But um, I'm just hesitant because I'm big on motives. That's a that's a big thing, you know. Like I said also last night, you don't know these people want to just be in the know. Some of these people they want to know your business, they want to know what you got going on, know how much money you make, know who you talking to. You have to be really careful, and that's and I told y'all last night I'm really mindful of who I have around me. And now, especially in this season of me having a following and growing. I'm extremely mindful of what of who I have around me and what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, mm. I, I understand. Well, I don't understand because I'm not on your level yet. So <laughs> oh stop! <laughs> Guess what? After this video, they're gonna be following you. Watch. Hey, <laughs> I feel that. That's what's up because uh, I got Sierra on here. Yeah, once once oh, I put this out there, it. everybody's gonna watch it stop. for real. There was something that you said last night on okay. your life now can we talk about it we can talk about whatever you would like okay i'm cool. a transparent person so I, I i let's go okay you spoke about a guy that was dating you or maybe y'all were in a relationship and you were saying if okay. your friend talked to you about him just kind of wanting to be mm -hmm. uh, with an influencer i guess and i'm just kind of I'm 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 just putting it in my own words. Okay. Can you can you talk about that a little bit and and what point did you get to where you was like, you know what, I can't do this relationship no more because okay. I'm an influencer? Well, okay, so um let me kind of do a short story. Actually, he broke up with me. Okay. Um, 
And it had nothing to do with me being an influencer. And, and so it's so I'm sorry. I just still have a hard time saying influencer because I just be like, I'm just Sierra. I'm just a regular person. So, you know, when you say an influencer, I'm like, ah. but um, he actually ended the relationship with me. And it had nothing to do with me, you know, my following and stuff like that. It was my best friend. It was after the fact of us breaking up when she and I were having conversation and she was like straight up with me. She was like, see, I feel like he was a fan. I feel like, you know, he was, he loved the, the whole infatuation of, oh, you know, you got a following. Oh, you know, like, I think he loved that. She, so that's why she called him a fan. She's like, I think that's why he's a fan. And so I'm just, and at the time, don't get me wrong. Like, like I told y'all last night, the man wanted to die on me. He did. Okay. Um, but it wasn't until after out of the relationship, you know, when you start thinking back of stuff that he said and, you know, you'd be like, oh, OK, well, I could see, you know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, so it didn't have anything to do with me being an, an influencer. And also, like, he actually was, you know, supportive of it. That's how we actually ended up meeting was on social media. Cause he followed me. So, um, yeah, so it had nothing. He, you know, he, he will be let you want me to record it for you or, you know, whatever. So, you know, he was supportive of it, but again, it wasn't until after the fact with certain stuff and certain that he said, you kind of like, mm, okay. Okay. I, I see what she was saying. So yeah, but she, my best, she's just so, she's so protective of me. And so she was like, he's a fan. And you know, and I'm just like, calm down, friend. <laughs> So, I mean, yes. Yeah. No, I hear you. Because I was just kind of paraphrasing. I thought the story was interesting when you started to share last night. I was like, hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So to those who are on TikTok or maybe they and, and maybe, okay, I'm being selfish for a minute because I got you now. What? I'm being selfish. Okay. Yeah. Because I want to, how can, how can I grow my TikTok? Because I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be on your level. So help, help a brother out. How can I get my TikTok game going? Okay. So let me just say this. This is what I tell people. Okay. Because y'all, let me tell you, I, I don't even know how my video, I promise y'all. I don't even know. I didn't pay nobody. I didn't none of that. I don't know how to pick, look. So let me, this is what I tell people. You have to do what works for you. And this is what, like, you know, you have people out here who trying to make people pay for, oh, you know, I'm just going to tell you, keep it real with you and tell you what I did. You have to, when I say do what works for you, I'm talking about, like, I picked different days of the week to post my videos to see when I drew the, more, the most traction. On those days, I will pick certain times. To see. So I tried the morning early view. I tried the uh, afternoon. I tried the evening. You know what I'm saying? To see what time slot works for me. So what, what, what tends to work for me is early morning. You think about it. People are just waking up. The first thing they doing, they grabbing their phone, they scrolling. So boom, you getting them because your video is going to start. Also, you got to know what's trending. You got to know the songs. And I tell people, yeah, if you're one of those people who don't like to cuss and whatever, I mean, you go try to find a clean version, but you got to know what's trending. Hashtags. You got to know what hashtags to use and stuff like that. So that's really, you know what I'm saying? And then, too, the main thing, being authentic. If you got personality and being authentic, boom, you in the game. You are in the game. That's so good. yeah, yeah. I hope that helps. No, for sure, because I can see opening up my phone and then seeing you starting your morning off and you turned up and you know you you kind of give me a jolt of energy, you know. Yeah, so I can see that. <laughs> I can see that. And correct yeah. me if I'm wrong. I I think I seen a video you had where you were you were uh, singing the lyrics to Juvenile, I think. Was I getting ready for work? I think so. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 And I was just like, 
<laughs> that video was live because I think he's talking about inspiring people or something. I don't know. I think something. It was one of the videos. What? I don't know. Yeah, it was. You one have of... you have to send it to me and show okay. me. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> <laughs> that I just but I did, do, I did do a video to the juvenile lyrics. You were paper chase ch that one. Yeah. That, so that, I, yeah. I was getting ready for work. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. I, I'm and I'm I'm gonna say this because I kid you not, when you was talking about those lyrics, I was like, Yeah, that's what's up. You a paper chaser, like get it. I was like, so now I I was literally <laughs> listening to huh the other day. For real, and I thought about you. I was like, "Shout out to Sierra," because now I listen to this song totally different. Yes, see? <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I can be some motivation for you. For sure. Okay, so we we kind of like halfway through the show. Uh, now, one time, I, and of course, I, I respect your time. There was I had an interview Good. that went from <laughs> that went from supposed to be a 30 minute segment to like over two hours it was crazy i was like i'm not going to turn this off because we got to get this okay. content it was crazy i just said that i'm not going to keep you two hours i'm just messing with you, <laughs> I, know you I, look, I gotta out. get up too early i, I know right so <laughs> I, I hear you bonus round so we're gonna get a little more serious what okay. is the biggest mistake you see women make in relationships what's the biggest mistake you said men make no, women make in relationships. Ooh. Okay. I can only speak for me. For sure. Okay. I I can only speak for me. Mm -hmm. Um I would say the biggest mistake that women make in relationships. Oh wow. I, I feel like, oh girl, you put me on the spot. The biggest mistake that women make in relationships i would say the biggest mistake is um There's no acting out of emo I, it's not i know yeah. i would just say acting out of emotion mm -hmm. and i say that because just from experience you know a lot of times and and, and then i know men do too but a lot of times you know, when we're caught up in a moment, we're listening, but we're not listening for understanding. We're not listening for, you know, we're listening be and, and to, to hear what they say so we can respond and react and get what we got to say. Yeah, but we're not really listening. You know what I'm saying? And, and trying to hear so we can have some understanding. Like, that's the biggest thing for me in a relationship is communication. Like, that is the biggest thing for me. And it wasn't until, you know, I was in a situationship and like I said I, I talked about it last night on you know on my live and I kept it real it's just until you have to hear somebody has to be straight up with you and, and call you out on your stuff it don't feel good you don't want to hear that but it's gonna help you grow and help you be a better person you know what I'm saying so I think what it, yeah listening for understanding <laughs> No, I hear you because you talked about acting out of emotions. And I like that you said that men act like that, too. Yes, it works both ways. Right. Uh, because even for me, I realized that I used to be emotionless. Like, I didn't care about a lot of stuff. Really? Yeah. So now that I'm a little older, mm -hmm. like almost a little more. And I think I've been... I'm more aware. I have more self-awareness after going through therapy okay. and stuff like that. And I realized I was like, oh, I used to let my emotions get the best of me. React. So let me ask you this. Were were you one of those ones who would keep it bottled until that last one and then you would explode? See? Yep. See? And and let's just I'm I'm gonna keep it a book because I realize even in therapy, it's like, oh, I do have mommy issues. Mm. Oh. and mm. it was a, it was an eye opener to me and me just talking to my therapist I was like yeah that's something and it, it used to be easy for me to get knocked off my square and now I realize now that I'm like you don't have to react out of emotions on everything or you don't have to shut down you don't have to stonewall but, you know what I'm but it goes back to always too you have to know what to react to you, you gotta know sometimes people will 
poke and prime just to get a reaction out of you. And then the thing that you can't do is you say you grew and you've grown, but soon somebody says something, you all like, oh, you know, no. Cause sometimes people, you wanna, and, and I, you literally, I tell, I be telling my, my little cousin this because she it be so quick to always respond. I say, sometimes you got to learn that let that stuff roll off your, your shoulder. Let that, and, and y'all, I'm just so, y'all, I'm just such in a space where I will stop talking to you. I will block you. I, I won't respond. I've gotten to a place so good that I can just put okay and go on about my business. That's how much of a space I'm in now. Because I've worked too hard for my peace. And you think I'm about to let you come and disrupt this? You got another thought coming, okay? <laughs> Not Sierra Levine. Uh, and people don't understand, like, I'm in a space of doing, like I said last night, since I'm in this singleness, this is about me. It has nothing to do with nobody else. This is about me. And I'm doing what I want to do. I'm enjoying what I want to do. And this is the first time in my life that I'm actually enjoying a the singleness. But you're not, no, not that disrupting no peace. Not over here, baby. You're not. <laughs> I love not it. over here. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yes. I'm, I'm all about that peace. I'm, you know, yes. I'm, I'm 46. I don't have time. At all. Yeah. At all. I don't. And life is just too short for the nonsense. Like we got people out here literally dying on a daily. And you trying to argue with me about, get away from me. Please <laughs> get away from me. <laughs> I, I, I'm just, I don't care. Family, friend, sibling. I do. Listen, my own mother, I have told her, I'll call you back and I've hung up because you, I'm not going there with you today. Yep. I'm just not. Yep. I yep. refuse. Life is just too short and life is too precious to be having all that. Ugh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No. Yeah, I agree <laughs> no. with it. There's a quote that says emotions make wonderful, wonderful servants, but terrible masters. Mm, that's good. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> I'm trying to live by that now. Yes. From seeing your parents relationship, what did it teach you about marriage? Um, Good and bad or just. Uh, Yes, good and bad. Mm -hmm. OK, so good. Let me start with the good. Um, my parents were married, I believe, 18 years or a little, I, I think 18 or 19 years, one of them. They divorced when I was in seventh grade. Um, but I love the fact that my dad, my parents, okay, let me not say my dad, my parents, they were workers, hard workers. We, my mother made sure we have, we had, we ate dinner every night. We had food on our table every night. Like my dad was just a go getter, like always working and like he couldn't sit still. My mom, she was just a hustler. Always my mom, my mom baked. So selling pies out the back of her, her van, catering. Like, I mean, and, and I love that. You know what I'm saying? Now, um, and, and you know, for the most part, I had a good childhood. You know what I'm saying? I, I love, I, I can sit, sit, sit here and tell y'all, I had both of my parents and I still do have both of my parents. Now, as far as the bad, um, I would say conversation and I say conversation because um, I, you know, first of all, my, I grew up in a household church. So when I say church, Pentecostal apostolic, we was at church all the time. Okay. <laughs> we had to wear the skirts. Uh, that whole thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I say conversation because um, even with my parents, I really, and this is just me being transparent. I don't really remember seeing a time where the love was like, you know, like hugging and you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I can't think off top. You know what I mean? But my mom, I would say my mom, I remember being a little girl and my mom would take me to like morning care and she would hold my hand and she would tell me I love you and stuff like that so my mom was a, you know she was affectionate but my dad he really wasn't affectionate like that um so I was and I say conversation because even being a teen I didn't really feel comfortable enough to be able to have those 
real open conversations about sex and about, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that's why now as a mother, uh, my daughter will be 16, February 16th. I, I know I, I know I don't look like it, <laughs> uh, but um, even as a mother, the biggest thing for me is I want my daughter to be able to come to me and talk to me about whatever. And it's like that now, like it's so crazy because we was in a car last week and she was like, okay, where did I leave off at last time? I told you about this. Okay. So let me tell you this, like we sitting there talking. So, and and that's the, that's the type of relationship I want to have. I, I, I have always wanted when I had my own child and I'm so grateful for that. So, yeah. That's beautiful. Okay. What's what's harder for you to say? Is it A, I apologize, B, I need help, C, I love you, D, I was wrong. I need help. Now, I don't have a problem apologizing at all. If I'm wrong, I was okay, you know what? I'm sorry, my bad. I love you. That's not an issue. Um I was wrong. I don't mind taking accountability, but that I need help. It is, and I'm telling you, me and other people, it's that pride, boy. It's that pride. You'd be like, oh. And so if I'm asking you, I legit need help. Like if I'm if I'm really legit laying, you know, pulling down the mask, hey, I need help. I'm gonna just be real with you. So yeah, I need help is the hardest for me. Okay. Last question. Okay. Is it easier to love yourself or someone else? Oh, this is a good one. Uh, but um, I'm speaking now, the space that I'm in is easier to love me because in past times, just for my relationships, putting people first and neglecting me. But now the space that I'm in, I will always choose me and I'm choosing me. So that's why it's easier to love myself. And when did that light turn on for you? Is there, has there been a certain time that you was like, okay, like, has there ever been a time in your life where you was like, you know what, I'm done? Was there ever a certain time that you maybe remember when that changed for you? What, me choosing myself? Yes. Mm -hmm. I was in, uh, I ended my relationship in Tennessee. Um, I had relocated for a relationship in Tennessee. And um this is the first time I ever lived with a man in my life. And my biggest thing was I didn't want to move with a man that I wasn't married with. Because I always, you know, it, it, no matter how much I might have played house, I, I didn't I had didn't want to move with no man that I wasn't married to. So, you know, before I had moved, I had told him, hey, I don't plan on being no girlfriend for no long time now. So you better be getting together. You know what I'm saying? But um, I get down there when I get down there. I'm cooking, I'm cleaning, I'm washing clothes. His, we had, he had custody of his son. I taught his son how to tie his shoe. I'm mother, like, you know, he worked for the fire station. I'm making cookies. I'm having Christmas. Like, I'm doing the whole wifey thing because I'm like, ha -ha, I'm about to be married. And it wasn't until that second month, going to the third month, it started wearing off. OK, started wearing off and I'm in a new state. Don't really know nobody. It's just me and my daughter and, you know, him know some of his family, but he was a firefighter and he worked a lot. So he was always gone. So I was home by myself. So with the kids, but I started feeling lonely. And so but I don't just blame him. I blame myself, too, because. He would always be like, you cool with me working overtime? And I'm like, oh, okay, cool. So it got to a point where he wasn't there all the time. So when he would be there, I would be like, why are you here? You know what I'm saying? So fast forward, arguing starts. He should start arguing real bad. I tell him, let's go to couples therapy. Kept putting it off. Okay. It just got to a point where I just started pulling away. Eventually, I started sleeping on the couch. He's sleeping in the bedroom, you know. One day, he and I would go work out at the gym together. And one day on the way home from the gym, I was looking out the window and the ride was just so quiet. And I was trying to swallow hard and hold back my tears, but I busted out crying. And he was like, what's wrong with you? 
And I was just like, I just miss home. I just miss being home. And he was like, oh, do you want to go home? Do you want? And I'm like, I just need to get there for the weekend. I just, I just needed to feel like be around my family. And so moving on fast forward, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry it's so long. <laughs> fast forward, moving on. I went to church one day and I just prayed and I said, God, if this is not for me, please get me out of this situation. And time just kept going and it was just arguing, arguing. And it got to the point where I, I said, I can't do this no more. I, I can't do this. And, um, you know, God worked it out for me and set me up to be able to leave. But I sat him down at a table and had a real conversation with him. And I said, hey, I can't do this. And I chose myself and I'm and I so I'm proud of myself because in past times I wouldn't have been bold enough to have that conversation. I wouldn't have been bold enough to say, hey, I can't do like I would have just pumped out and try to make up an excuse. No, I couldn't do it because I said I literally I, I was driving down the street. I said, can you really see yourself doing this for the rest of your life in Memphis, Tennessee? Mm. No. And the answer was no. And I knew then I got to get out of this thing. So 2020, even though it's been three years, excuse me, 2020 was when that I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll be choosing myself from here on out. Mm -hmm. so, yes. No, that's that's a beautiful thing. I, I always like to ask my guests that question and um, like to know when did that light actually turn on? Because uh, unfortunately, a lot of times women are, value based on what they can do for others mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's about how i can make sure that the kids have their meals that my husband is fed that he's you know sexed up you know and all yep. that other stuff and, and women have more value than just what they can do for others yep and and i promise you i i'm sorry that that was so long that answer was so long um but <laughs> I'm in a space right now and I try to tell everybody that I can. I'm just in this good space where I just refuse to be unhappy. If 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 you bring, if it's somebody around me who's bringing a negative vibe or something, I will literally stop talking to you. I, I don't have it in me for nonsense. I just don't. I'm quick to like, no. And I, I don't, I don't, I will tell you about yourself. I don't mind telling you. And, and again, it's all about the delivery and how you say it, but what you're not going to do, you're not going to come around here and disrupt this because I've worked too hard to get to where I'm at. And then especially with where I'm going, you definitely not about to, you not. So I'm just really big on just pushing, please do what makes you happy. Do I, I've lived in that life where I couldn't really, really freely live because I'm worried about what others think and what, like, especially church people. Don't get me wrong. I love church. Y'all know y'all can speak. I love me some church, but I want people to be released from the shackles of, opinion, of people's opinion. Please, y'all, like do what you want to do. And I always tell people, I don't have a heaven or hell to put you in. That's between you and God. Like I try to tell people, my relationship with God, that's between me and him, not you. Not you. So you let me and God do this. <laughs> don't worry about what we got going on, okay? I tell people, touch your nose. Not, don't stay out of my business, okay? <laughs> But I just, for real, if, if you don't take nothing else away from this interview today, y'all, please make sure you are doing what you want to do and make sure that you are living your life. Life is too short to be unhappy. Life is too short to be working a job you don't want to do. Life is too short to be in an unhealthy relationship. Like, it's too short. And I refuse to live my life like that. I refuse it. Mm -hmm. So, please. Right. But if you don't take nothing else away, take that away. Live your life. I know that's right. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with that, Sierra. This has been a phenomenal episode. Yes. Thank you so much for your time, for your wisdom, for your gems, and you're going to help yes. everybody grow the TikTok channel. Yes. <laughs>
Man. I want to I want to hear some stories about about some videos going viral too. Yes, I it's truly been an honor being um on your show. I am so excited that I finally got to come and sit down with you. So I'm super I'm just I'm grateful for the opportunity. Uh, and I really want you to know that. Um I'm really grateful for it and I'm excited and I cannot wait until the people are giving us feedback about our interview because I'm going to share, share, share. You know, all my people are going to be watching. So I thank you so much for the opportunity. I appreciate um, it. No, I appreciate it because I was thinking, I was like, okay, I slide in her DM and ask her. I'm thinking, oh, she's going to have to sift through 10,000 emails. She probably ain't going to even no, respond. You responded. No, and I was like, that's what's I up. Did. I did. I, well, again, there are people, I literally go through and I will just eh, yeah but you know if this this you know it, this is a, a wonderful opportunity and so and I don't take it lightly when people ask me to do stuff like this I'm grateful and I so mean it and I want you to know that so that's why yes whatever I can do let's get it whatever I can do for sure well Bravehearts community you heard it here make in the uh in the comment section let us know you know about your TikTok and all the other good stuff and let us know from these results because yes. uh, Sierra is putting us on game. Let everyone know how they can get in touch with you. Well, uh, if you are not following me, I would love to have you join the Sierra Levine world. You can follow me on Instagram at underscore Levine C two underscores or on TikTok Sierra Levine and Facebook. I'm on there too. Sierra Levine. But whatever you choose, I would love to have you as a follower and I'll follow you back. Thank you so much in advance. <laughs> For sure. And I'll have everything linked up in the description below. So that way, yes, you can yes, just yes. click to go to your page. Well, Brave Arts community, you heard it here. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you share this with someone. If you are listening to this via podcast, leave a rating and review. By doing so, we'll put you on a drawing for a free Amazon gift card. We gave a free Amazon gift card away not too long ago. Who doesn't like free things? This is Sean Heineman with special guest. Sierra Levine. <laughs> All right, Brave Hearts community. Take care. Hey, thanks again for watching another segment of A Scary to Remarry. I have so much more amazing content and some phenomenal guests as well. People who've been through a divorce, people who remarried, people who desire to marry. So much great content. So make sure that you hit one of these videos. It's somewhere around here. But anyway, go watch another video.